ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره مقدار عظيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون لا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله تعالى في كتاب العزيز فدعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا من يرتد منكم فيأت الله بقوم يحبهم ويحبونه Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book O you who believe Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu In yaratad minkum If any one of you is to, were, were to apostate If any one of you were to leave Islam Yatillahu bi qawmin Allah is going to come with a people Yuhibbuhum Those people love him He, are, he loves them Yuhibbuhum Allah loves them and they love him. The scariest part about that verse is that Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu in the beginning. He doesn't say, Ya ayyuhal nas. He doesn't say, O people. He doesn't say, Ya ayyuhal muslimun. He doesn't say, O believers. He, or, he doesn't say, O muslims, rather. He says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. Rather, Allah says, O you who believe. O oh, you who have brought Iman, O oh, you who have La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It's raised up beyond just your tongues But it has now entered into your limbs and that you're doing work, and you're doing actions This is the sign of Iman, is that a person is doing actions He calls on those people, and this is forever It's not uh, during just uh, exclusive to the time of the uh, Quraysh And time of, uh, rather the time of Mecca, or the time of Medina Or these ancient times no, and that verse itself is talking about some of the some of the ulama say that they say that that verse was talking about the people of Yemen, and others say that it was talking about Salman al-Farsi and his people. But in truth, it's the the it's for all people that fit in the attributes that Allah mentions after that point, right? Adilatan al-Muslimin, Adilatan al-Kafirin. They are humble with the believers, and they are you know. Uh, they have dignity in front of the disbelievers These are uh, the, the characteristics that are there But what does he say? He says, Allah Ta'ala says Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu He's talking about the people who have faith But there's something wrong with their faith There's something deficient about their faith You and I, we might know That you say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. We might have perfect Arabic pronunciation. Ashhadu. No, brother, you say it like Ashhadu. That's fine. May Allah bless us to have perfect Arabic speaking tongues. But the pronunciation itself is not uh, the goal. There are many people out there who actually speak. Matter of fact, when you study Arabic language, when you look at the Arabic books, the books that are written for Arabic grammar, most of them are written by Christian Lebanese. They're actually very, very good at Arabic. And they write most of the books that come out, they have like libraries of grammar and libraries of, of morphology. They're written by Christians. So if having stunning Arabic capacity was the, 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 the pinnacle of, uh, of faith, that's like how many percentage of believers are in trouble? <laughs> I mean, Salman al-Farsi himself, who's indicated in this verse, had a problem speaking Arabic. Because of his Persian background. No, something's missing in the faith of these individuals. They have all the outward embellishments of faith. They're acting, in the, but something's missing inside. Something makes them come out of Islam, and it's real simple. Allah says right there, Allah will bring up people who what? Who know tajweed. It's not what it says. Allah will bring up people who know 
uh, economics. It's not what he says. Allah will bring the people who've mastered all of the nuances of politics to get us out of our problems because Muslims are leaving the deen because we're not strong on the earth. That's not what it says. Right? He says, He will come with a people, qawm. It's a, it's a, it's a qawm. <laughs> Allah calls them a qawm. They are a people. They are a, they are, they're people that Allah Ta'ala Himself knows. They're not people that are related by, necessarily, by tribe. They're not necessarily related by time, uh, time constraints. Because you, be, you can be one of these people now, and be one of those people then, and be one of these people in the future, and you're still part of this qawm, this folk, these people. These are the ones that Allah Ta'ala loves. These are the ones that Allah Azza wa Jal finds esteem for. And He loves them first. He says, He will come with the people. They have a quality. يُحِبُّهُمْ Allah loves them. وَيُحِبُّونَ And they love Him. It is impossible for you and I to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without Allah loving us first. And the proof of it is in this verse. He says, يُحِبُّهُمْ Allah loved them first. Allah saw something in them, in His eternal knowledge. Allah's knowledge is not like yours and mine. It's always been. The objects of Allah's knowledge have always been there. We find things out. Allah doesn't find anything out. Everything happens according to His knowledge. So Allah has known the essence and the reality of these people before you and I even known them. And that's why you hear the ulama mentioning that Allah Ta'ala loved Sayyidina Umar. Allah Ta'ala loved Sayyidina Umar. Allah Ta'ala loved Sayyidina Umar when he was prostrating to idols. Huh? He loved him when he was making prostrations to idols because Allah knew what he was going to become. And Allah knows these, the hearts of individuals who are walking outside the street. Many of them, be careful who you talk to and how you talk to them. You don't know who you're talking to. This man can be, oh, look at this guy. You know, he has these big, like, hubcaps in his ears. And when he takes it out, it has big, like, rings. It's disgusting. Ugh. Ma aqba hadha. How disgusting that is. Oh, look at him. You know, he has tattoos. You know, if he ever becomes Muslim, his wudu is never going to be valid, you know. Because of the ink and the blood and, you know, I hope he's not Shafi. <laughs> As if Allah looks at us like that. There are people that are walking outside that at this moment and this time, they are people that, wallahi, they'll be buried in Muslim, Muslim graves. And there are people that will, they, will be, they are already amongst the friends of Allah and Allah's knowledge. And we don't, they haven't even taken shahada yet. And may Allah make them come, many of them. There are people that right now might be atheists, they might be Buddhists, they might be whatever the case may be. But they're here. And they believe, and they believe hard. And Allah loves them, and He loves them. You know what? He probably loves them more than, He loves them more than He does me. And I know Allah loves me, I wouldn't be here if He didn't. Because a person will slip and slide and fall and fall and go further and further and further into their own mess. Do you know why Allah allows a person to do that? One of the reasons, and, his, and, his, and he has no limits to Allah. One of the reasons why Allah allows a person to slip that far, to go that far away from their natural inclination, is so that they will realize at one point that there is nothing for them but Him. They will fall and fall and fall and fall and do things that when they look back, they don't know where they were. The proof that Allah loves them so much is that when they get to that point, they're not thinking about anyone, anything, anytime, anywhere except the one who made them. And that state is called Tawheed. That state of reality is called Tawheed. Tawheed is not a point system, a point of doctrine that you learn and now you're a Mr. Smart Man. Tawheed is about a state inside your heart. It's like when the airplane is going to crash. The airplane is going to crash. And you realize at that point in time that there's nothing that can save you. That moment of clarity and that moment of reality and that moment of distinction from all other moments, that moment is called Islam. When you realize, La ilaha illallah, a person is going to crash and doesn't start ringing for the stewardess. Just pardon me, ma'am. The plane is going to crash. Can you stop this from happening? 
You're not going to hear, you're going you might, you, you're going to hear a lot of things coming out of people's mouths. But the person who realizes and the person who's in the right place at the right time and they have the clarity about God at that moment, that is called Islam. And all we're trying to do is take that clarity and bring it out and draw it out for the rest of our lives. That's called Islam. If you haven't experienced that yet, may Allah give us all tawfiq. And just put it in our hearts. We don't want near-death experiences to become better Muslims. <laughs> we don't need it. Just take my word for it. But that's what this is about. It's about taking that moment of clarity that some of us have had and some of us kind of need and stretch it out for the duration of one's life. Because you realize at that moment, at that point, that there's nothing worthy of my love. I am dependent upon one Allah. No matter how much I love my wife, she's screaming next to me. No matter how much I might think I might love that new sister that I saw, she's screaming too. Everybody's screaming. Because our dependence is, is where, who are we calling on? This is like harf nida in Arabic. You know, ah! It's like harf nida. It's like a, a, a tool for calling. Usually you say, yeah. Ya fulanu, oh so and so. Ya rajulu, oh man. But this is a new one. It's called, ah! <laughs> You're calling on Allah. It is not limited to language, it's not limited to culture, it's not limited to time. It's limited to uh, a reality and a state that comes in people's hearts. When someone loves something, when you love something, the problem with many of us, wallahi, the, the problem with many of us, if we even have one, is that we've never been in love. We don't know what it feels like. We don't know what it feels like to say stupid things. I wish, girl, I wish you would bury me. What? Just bury me in, in all of it. All, all of what? Just do it, girl. It's insanity. And it happens to people because they, they've lost themselves and the object of their love. Why is it so difficult for us to feel this way about the one who gives us everything? Why is it so difficult for us? We're so proper when it comes to God. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar. <clears throat> Alhamdulillah. That's not love. I've seen some people with my own eyes who teach, they, you know, they teach, they've been teaching students for their whole life. They've memorized the books of fiqh and jurisprudence. Some of them, wallahi, if you watch them pray salah, you would think that they need to take another course on how to pray. They know the rules, they know all of it, but they're so stuck in the presence of Allah when they're praying, that it's a completely natural act. Maybe their back isn't completely bored straight. Also, when they pray their prayer, that's one act of worship that they've done, and a series of continual worship acts ever since they sleep in worship. And they wake up in worship. So our little run to the mosque and stand next to everybody and make sure you make that loud takbir so everyone knows you're praying. <laughs> Allahu Akbar! That little one act of worship that, that you and I do, that's not even a drop in the ocean of these people. And when they pray, when they go into salah, the only difference between their state inside salah and out of salah is the takbir. That's it. Continual prayer. Wallahi, I've seen some of them talking to themselves. I've seen it. Oh. Oh. It's like, what? You listen close, they're actually having munajat. They're having intimate discourse with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've seen it. I've heard some of them praying, I've heard some of them sleeping. Sending salawat ala Nabi sallam. In their sleep. Reading Quran in their sleep. Man, you don't do that unless you're in love, man. You can't, you can't do that unless your heart is still awake. You cannot say those things unless it's coming from your heart. Your heart is pouring out its emotion and it's, and it's the object of its love. It's calling on the object of its love, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the reality of that verse when he says that he will come with the people that love him. Uh, he, uh, he will come with the people. He loves them and they love him. And that's why a man came to the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. Ja'a rajulu. فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ مَتَى السَّاعَةُ A man came to the Prophet, this is a hadith narrated by Sayyidina Anas ibn, ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He said that a man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, 
Mata sa'a? When is the last day? When is that day when we'll stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we'll, be, and we'll be, except for those who are excluded from this situation, we'll be totally naked. You're wearing your birthday suit. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, how can that be? I mean, you know, what about modesty? He said, on that day, there will be, no one will be thinking about anyone else but himself. They won't even be seeing uh, nudity. All they'll be saying is nafsi, nafsi. Except for who? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ummati, ummati. On that day when people will be standing, in some narrations they say that they'll be standing up to their ankles in sweat. Some up to their knees in sweat. Some up to their uh, hips in sweat. Some of them up to their shoulders in sweat. Because of their concern and worry about what they send forth in their life. For some people that day will be 50,000 years long. And for some people it will be just like two raka'ah. Raka'atain. Allahumma, may Allah make us from those people. I want to be part of the Rakatain clique. <laughs> this is what we want. So if you want, to be, you want to be part of a clique, join that clique. And I heard one of the best ways to get in that clique is to invite other people to your clique. You get a VIP pass from that clique. And you'll be clicky. So on that day, may Allah save us from that day, people will be completely... If you never... If you don't believe that people can have states where they don't realize what's happening, read about the narrations about the Day of Judgment. If you don't believe that people can have spiritual states that they don't realize what's happening, you are sleeping. Watch someone watch television. Watch someone watch television. They have some of the ugliest faces. I can't watch people watch TV. Because they just look... They have no idea what's happening around them. You call their name. Muhammad. Muhammad. Huh. That's because they're fana. They're gone. They're lost. That's the proof. Happens to most of us every single day. Now once we have, we have uh, fana in our iPhones and cause car accidents. I don't know, man. It was only one second long. And you know, I know. That's all it takes, man. One second of fana. That's all you need for your life. <laughs> in the good way and the positive way. So on that day, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ma'adadta the sa'a. What have you prepared for the day? The man answered, Uhibbu Allaha, Uhibbu Rasula. He said, I love Allah and I love His Messenger. Do we think that they didn't know the reality of the Day of Judgment? How do you think you and I know about the reality of the Day of Judgment? It came through their mouths. They heard An Rasulullah Sallallahu They heard from him. The only thing we know about our deen is from these individuals. And he said, What have you prepared for it? He said, Uhibullah wa Rasulah. I love Allah and I love his messenger. And how did the Prophet peace upon him uh, he reply? Qala. Fa innaka. Fa innaka. Ma'aman ahbabt. He said, so, ver- so verily you will be with the one that you love. That's how he answered it. فَإِنَّكَ مَا أَمَنْ So verily you will be with the one that you loved. Now if this doesn't cause us to stop and think about what it is and who it is and how it is that we love, I don't know what will. Your name can be Ismail As-Salih. رَجَلٌ طَيُّبْ معروف فِي الْعَالَمْ Great guy, known throughout the world. But he really, in his heart, he loves so-and-so, and he loves so-and-so. On that day, he won't be standing with the musallin. On that day, he'll be standing with so-and-so. Another hadith, he said, المَرْءُ مَعَ مَنْ أَحَبْ It's a different narration, the man is with the one that he loves. Here he says, فَإِنَّكَ مَعَ مَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ Verily, you are with those who you've loved. Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, he said, مَا فَرِحْنَا بَعْدَ السَّلَامِ بَعْدَ الْإِسْلَامِ We have, we were never as happy after our Islam. أَشَدَّ farhan, That happy. We were never that happy as when he said, فَإِنَّكَ مَا أَمَنْ أَحْبَبْتْ Verily you are with the one that you love. He said, فَأَنَا Anas bin Malik, he said about himself, he was the student of, uh, he was the khadim of Rasulullah for 10 years. 
He said, فَأَنَا This is in Muslim. فَأَنَا أُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَحِبُّ رَسُولَ وَأَبَا بَكَرْ وَعَمَرْ وَأَرْجُوا أَنَّ أَكُونَ مَعَ مَنْ أَنَّ أَكُونَ مَعَهُمْ وَلَا أَعْمَلُوا كَأَعْمَالِهِمْ وَكَمَا قَالْ Or something to this effect at the end. He said about this, he said, I bear, I, as for Anas bin Malik, I love Allah, and I love His Messenger, and I love Abu Bakr, and I love Umar, and I hope to be with them on that day. Even though my actions are not like their actions. This is what he said. If you love the pious, you will be with them. If you love the righteous, you will be with them. Do not have this attitude, I'm a man, he's a man, what's the difference between me and him? I'll tell you the difference between you and him. Allah might love him and not love you. What you mean? I'm just saying. It could be the other way around, but do you want to take that chance? How about, why don't you humble yourself a little bit and make it a possibility that perhaps there's someone better than you on this planet? Perhaps you should lower yourself just in case. If you love the Salihin, you will be from amongst them. Even though you don't do what they do. That's why people, they say, you know, they, these people, they love their teachers too much. Man, look, let me explain something to you. I'm a businessman. What's my business? I don't want to go to hell. So I'm trying to do whatever it takes for me to get Allah's attention long enough to where perhaps He will put me in a better place than there. There's two options. We don't believe in the, you know, purgatory. You got one of two. And what I'm saying is, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said that you will be with the one that you love. If you have a problem with me loving Shaykh so-and-so, that's your problem. That is your condition. That's not my condition. I have my own. Suhail ibn Salih, he narrated a hadith and he said that, that, that during the time of Hajj, he said, فَمَرَّ Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Umar, the son of, ibn, the son of Abdul Aziz, he's the grandson of Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. He comes by. He said, فَمَرَّ He comes by. فَقَامَ النَّاسِ يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهِ So people stood up to see who he was. They were like, whoa, listen, they stood up to see who he was. So standing up for people who are righteous, <laughs> he said they all stood up to see who he was. Oh, they know who he is, but they're standing up for him. Yanduru ilay. He saw. He said, "Qala ya abati." He said, "My father." He said, "I know that Allah loves this man. A boy, a boy. Or who are, or Allahu alam his age? It's in Muslim. You can look for it." He said, I know that Allah loves this man. The man, the man said to him, وَمَادَاك How do you know? What's your proof? He said, because of the love that people have in their heart for him. If you want to know if Allah loves someone, it's very simple. Look at people, how they interact with him. If you want to know if Allah loves you, or you want to know your state with Allah, it's very simple, man. Not complicated. You don't have to buy like some kind of I, you know, like an iPod application. If you want to know how Allah loves you, or if you want to know your relationship with Allah, look at your relationship with other people. It's a hadith from Sayyidina Abu Huraira. That when Allah loves someone in the heavens, He calls to Jibreel and says, I love so and so. We know this hadith, we've heard it. And this, this love trickles down, it has a trickle down effect, and it occurs into the whole world. And so finally, when someone says, Oh, have you heard of, of Fulan, of so-and-so? And the reaction is always, Oh, mashallah, I love that brother. That's because Allah loves that brother. And sisters say, Oh, yeah, I love that sister. Man, whenever I see her, she reminds me of Allah. The thing that's missing in those people who said, uh, when Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe, in in yartad min dinikum, if you leave your religion, he's even explaining how and why it happens. 
If you want something, you are a slave to that thing. If you want something, you are a slave to that thing. If you want something, you are a slave to that thing. Which is why the Muslim is safe. Because the Muslim, the believer, who has deep, deep experiential knowledge in their heart, an experience in their, in their heart, they know that all they want is Allah. And Allah has set up means. So when they get a car, they don't get the car because they want people to see them. They get the car because they want to be able to work to provide for their family. They get a car because they want to be able to drive to the masjid. They will get a car because they don't want to be dependent on other people. They, they get a car for these various reasons. It ends up going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. And this is a happy individual. This is the one who's happy because they, their conscience is clear. Why? Because you worship what you love. Many of us, our conscience is not clear because we... I'm sorry. You, you are the slave of what you want. Sorry. And many of us, our conscience is not clear because we, be, we become enslaved to things that it's not appropriate. There are certain things in our hearts that you and I have fallen in love with that it's not appropriate and our heart is crying about it. The remedy for that is to look past it. Don't look at the thing that your heart loves, look at the one who provided it. If your heart loves something haram, no problem, man. Make tawbah. It's not a big deal. But even then, if your heart loves something that's halal, just look past it. Look at the one who gave it to you, redirect your love, khalas. May Allah make us ibad. May Allah make us uh, His slaves. That all we want is Him. وَسِيكُمْ بِتَاكَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلُّ وَسَنِ وَتَعَى اسْتَغْفِرُوهُ يَا قَوْمِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهِ اسْتَغْفِرُوهُ يَا قَوْمِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمِ ولكن عذابه شديد ونسأل الله تعالى العافية والصحة في أمورنا كلها الحمد لله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره مقداره العظيم الله أكبر so, الحمد لله the, the key to success is in our hearts the one who's in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do they view the world? How do they see the world? They don't, they, all they see is the world is just his jamal and his jalal. The world and everything in it is simply his jamal and his jalal. Please come forward inshallah. And like we said in the beginning, the, the qibla we realize is a little bit straighter. So if you just turn a little bit, I mean, a lot of it. <laughs> There'll be much more room for everybody too. Barakallahu fikum. All of us have the key in our heart. The key that's in our heart is the is it's called mail al qalb, what the heart inclines towards. The heart loves beautiful things. And all we see in the world are two things. There are two categories of Allah's presence in the world. They're under the category of Jamal and they're under the category of Jalal. Allah Ta'ala has manifested His beauty and Allah Ta'ala has manifested His might or some would say rage. When you look at the world and you, you yourself and I are part of that, there are two categories to put everything. The beauty and the sublimity. Nothing is happening independent of Allah. If you don't like it, it's called Jalal. If it's hard on you, it's called Jalal. If it straightens you out, it's called Jalal. If it makes you question and humble yourself, it's called Jalal. If it's something that makes your heart soft, and it's something that, right, both of them lead to Allah. 
If it's something that makes your heart makes you fall in love, it makes your heart soft, for most people, it's called Jamal. And the most amazing thing about this Jamal and Jalal is it's not the same for everybody. What some what one person sees as Jalal, the other one says it's Jamal, and vice versa. It's never the same. And never to the same degree. The one that's in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that realizes that all they want is God, they have a good opinion of Allah at all times. Because they can't stand to miss out anything. When your loved one says something to you, how do you listen to it? What I mean by loved one? The loved one, the one that makes your heart smile. When they say something, your, even your voice changes. What did you say, boo-boo? Like, you know you don't talk like that. <laughs> I mean, you shouldn't. If you do, then maybe that's why you don't have a good job. <laughs> but why does that happen? Because the person is inclined towards them. And they love them, their heart is softened, and they just, oh, they're ready to do and give them whatever that they need because of what they get from that individual. When you love something and you love someone, you have a good opinion about it, you want to hear it, you want to hear it expression. And even sometimes, that Jalal and that Jamal becomes the same thing. That's an, another stage is that you just don't, you just, you're just goo-goo about everything that happens. You lost your job, alhamdulillah. I don't like that job. You're making 80,000 a year. I know, but Allah didn't like it, so I don't like it either. What are you going to do? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> the slave doesn't choose for himself or herself. That's where true happiness lies. It's in being, it's accepting whatever it is that Allah has written. If you want to do something, you want to make effort, no problem. We're, we're required to. We're required to. Aqim as salah Allah says, establish the prayer. If we're not required to do anything, that would be the first thing that we're not required to do. <laughs> but if something doesn't work out the way you planned, Alhamdulillah. It's the best thing that could have ever happened to you. And the way that it happened is the best way that it could have ever have happened. Why? Because He loved you first. Do you and I think Allah is treacherous? Think about it. The, the right response is no. But what about our actions? Do we really think Allah is treacherous? That we're going to say, La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, and He's going to leave us? Do we really think that He's going to just, oh, now I got you, and put us, put us in the can? <laughs> or is that shaitan talking to us? Shaitan didn't have love. The reality of love is that the lover is burned away, is lost, is extinguished, is gone in the, in the object of their love. That's the reality of it. So when the Sahaba, they saw Rasulullah they saw Al-Mahbub, the Beloved. When he said, do anything, they're ready. When he said, refrain, they stopped. That's why we don't know anything about Sunnah, Fard, Mustahab, all these terms. They, didn't, they were not existent during the time of the Prophet ﷺ. They came after. You know why? Because whatever he did, they did it. No one had to explain it to them. Even to the point that even after he passed away, peace be upon him, there is a trail. Uh, Abdullah ibn Umar would, walk, would go by a trail. And when going by the trail, he would duck his head. He would duck his head. And there's nothing there to duck. But there, in the time when the Prophet saw him, there was a tree that was there, and when he would ride by, he would see him duck, or uh, lean. So whenever he went by that trail, as soon as he got to that point, <laughs> that's, called, that's called junoon. That's called insanity. <laughs> if you don't have any man in your heart. May Allah give us a kind of Islam that doesn't need words. May Allah give us a kind of Islam that doesn't need explanations. May Allah give us a kind of, 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 a, of an Islam and an Iman and an Ihsan that wipes away our problems, that wipes away our, our doubts, that wipes away our shortcomings, that wipes away all of the, the issues that keep us from coming close. May Allah make it that we literally dive, full dive, headlong into His love and never turn back and never look back and trust and trust and trust and stop swimming and just learn how to drown. O oh Allah Ta'ala, we ask you that you flood us with your mercy and your grace and your mercy and your rahmah. 
that you flood us and you inundate us with your love, that fact the matter is you already have, and here we are trying to swim. Allah, accept our repentance and allow us, give us tawfiq to stop swimming and to drown in your presence, Ya Allah. Make us dhaqirin, those who remember you, remember you, well dhaqirat, male and female. That remembrance, the kind of remembrance that wipes away all other things. And by doing so, Ya Allah, make us the khulafa of this earth, the people who are established to run this earth for your sake and for your praise. And forgive us, Ya Allah. Alhamdulillah. اللهم اغفر جميع المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الله يا منهم والأموات الله يا منهم والأموات وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله وأقيم الصلاة. or the time of Medina or these ancient times no and that verse itself is talking about some of the some of the ulama say that they say that that verse was talking about the people of Yemen. And others say that it was talking about Salman al-Farsi and his people. But in truth, it's, the, the, it's for all people that fit in the attributes that Allah mentions after that point. Right? Adilatan al-Muslimin, Adilatan al-Kafirin. They are humble with the believers and they are, you know, uh, they have dignity in front of the disbelievers. These are uh, the, the characteristics that are there. But what does he say? He says, Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu He's talking about the people who have faith. But there's something wrong with their faith. There's something deficient about their faith. You and I, we might know that you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. We might have perfect Arabic pronunciation. Ashhadu. No, brother, you say it like ashhadu. If any one of you is to, were, were to apostate, if any one of you were to leave Islam, yatillahu bi qawmin, Allah is going to come with the people, yuhibbuhum. They love, those people love Him. He, are, he loves them, yuhibbuhum. Allah loves them, wa yuhibbuna, and they love Him. The scariest part about that verse is that Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu In the beginning He doesn't say Ya ayyuhal nas He doesn't say O people He doesn't say Ya ayyuhal muslimun He doesn't say O believers He, or, he doesn't say O muslims Rather He says Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu Rather Allah says O oh, you who believe O oh, you who have brought iman O oh, you who have La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it's raised up beyond just your tongues, but it has now entered into your limbs and that you're doing work, and you're doing actions. This is the sign of iman, is that a person is doing actions. He calls on those people, and this is forever. It's not uh, during just uh, exclusive to the time of the uh, Quraysh, in time of, uh, rather, the time of Mecca. <laughs> من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره مقدار عظيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون لا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله تعالى في كتاب العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا من يرتد منكم فيأتي الله بقوم يحبهم ويحبونه الله سبحانه وتعالى says in his book O you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, in yaratada minkum. That's fine. May Allah bless us to have perfect Arabic speaking tongues. But the pronunciation itself is not uh, the goal. There are many people out there who actually speak. Matter of fact, when you study Arabic language, when you look at the Arabic books, the books that are written for Arabic grammar, most of them are written by Christian Lebanese. They're actually very, very good at Arabic. 
and they write most of the books that come out, they have like libraries of grammar and libraries of, of morphology. They're written by Christians. So if having stunning Arabic capacity was the, 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 the pinnacle of, uh, of faith, that's like how many percentage of believers are in trouble? <laughs> I mean, Salman al-Farsi himself, who's indicated in this verse, had a problem speaking Arabic. Because of his Persian background. No, something's missing in the faith of these individuals. They have all the outward embellishments of faith. They're acting, in the, but something's missing inside. Something makes them come out of Islam, and it's real simple. Allah says right there, Allah will bring up people who what? Who know Tajweed. It's not what it says. Allah will bring up people who know uh, economics. It's not what He says. Allah will bring up people who've mastered all of the nuances of politics to get us out of our problems because Muslims are leaving the deen because we're not strong on the earth. That's not what it says. Right? He says... He will come with a people, qawm. It's a, it's a, it's a qawm. <laughs> Allah calls them a qawm. They are a people. They are a, they are, they're people that Allah Ta'ala Himself knows. They're not people that are related by, necessarily, by tribe. They're not necessarily related by time, uh, time constraints. Because you can, be, you can be one of these people now, and be one of those people then, and be one of these people in the future, and you're still part of this qawm, this folk. These people. These are the ones that Allah Ta'ala loves. These are the ones that Allah Azza wa Jal finds esteem for. And He loves them first. He says, He will come with the people. They have a quality. يُحِبُّهُمْ 